Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Thought we'd do a question and answer. I had a sister in Christ and I'm apologizing that it took so long to get this out. Okay, But a question and answer. What if the Jewish people accepted Christ at his coming in the likeness of sinful flesh? Okay, that's what I decided to title this at, as. Okay, I got a question and answer from the video I did if you believe in the Millennial Kingdom Doctrine video. And it's properly called Kingdom of Heaven because we did another video called Are You a Bible Believer? Millennial Kingdom or Kingdom of Heaven, sometimes called the Kingdom of God, and it's also called the Day of, of the Lord. Okay, but more specifically, the Kingdom of Heaven includes the time of Jacob's trouble going into the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day, and it also includes after the um, the day of the Lord, that thousand year reign, it includes when Satan's let loose for a little while. Because uh, Jesus does, uh, I was talking to a brother in Christ, Jesus does parables. And when he's talking about the parable of the sower, uh, not the sower, but where the enemy comes through and he sows tares among the wheat. What's this, I believe? I believe that at the end of the thousand year reign, when Satan's let loose for a while, he goes and sows tares among the wheat. Okay. But that's a whole other discussion. Uh, people try to grab that and try to use that today because today there's false converts. There's people that are counterfeit. They try to pretend like uh, Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. He tries to pretend to be a Jesus Christ. He's an antichrist. Okay? No marvel for his ministers also transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So there is counterfeit today. There are tares today. There's, there's instruction in righteousness, but doctrinally, I believe it's talking about that time period at the end of the day, Lord. So kingdom of heaven, or kingdom of God, the teachings when, when Jesus is teaching, it's going through the time of Jacob's trouble, going into the day of the Lord, and you have to rightly divide what parables for what part of that time period. That's at the kingdom of heaven, is that whole time period. All right? Now, Here's, here's, I'm going to read the comment and the question that the sister in Christ made. Praise and, eh, praise and give glory to God for this teaching. Once again, amen. Thank you, brother, sister in Christ. Brothers, sister Christ, if any of the videos, Bible studies that we do, getting into the Word of God encourages you to stick with the Word of God, hide it in your heart and live it, to be a living witness, a verbal witness, helps you with your day-to-day -day walk with the Lord, Helps you how to handle, like put on the whole armor of God, how to handle the enemy and, and the world and how to put the flesh down, the lust of the flesh down. How to bring your thoughts into subjection, every thought into subjection to the obedience of Christ. Give God the glory. Give God all the glory. I don't want to become like some of the teachers out there that have gotten so puffed up with pride and ego and everyone's worshipping them. Oh, you're the greatest preacher ever. You're the only Bible-believing preacher left on YouTube. You're just... You're just so great. Uh, it's almost like they go to the point of, they don't ever say this, but it's like I can see them saying this someday because they're just so extreme with a lot of these people on YouTube. With It's called, the Bible, we did studies on it, um, Respect Our Persons. And they're so worshiping that person behind the, the pulpit in these battle buildings, with it, they think their poop don't stink. I'm here to tell you, my poop stinks. All right? I'm not perfect. In other words, I'm sorry, but I'm not perfect. In other words, I make mistakes. Okay? I don't want the glory on me. I don't want the praise of men. I want the praise of God. And I want God to give all the glory. The Bible says we're to give God all the glory. We're to give God all the thanks. The reason I'm hitting that hard is, is people always get frustrated with me because when they try to give me thanks, I correct them and say, give God all the glory. Give God the glory. I'm grateful that God bless me with this study, and that God was able to help you through this ministry. Give God all the glory. Why is that so important? Back to what I said without being too visual. but it's, it's, It brings in pride. It brings in pride. I've seen a lot of great men, great men of God that were humble and meek. Remember in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. They're humble, they speak with authority, but they don't reward evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. They have love and grace for the brethren. They have love for the lost world to preach the gospel to them. And now when they get puffed up and they get patted on the back so much, they get so puffed up that that pride and that ego, it ruins them. Pride goes before destruction. It ruins them. 
So please, brothers and sisters Christ, it's not me being mean or anything. It's just me trying to say, please, give God the glory. Don't give me the glory. I'm fallible. I am a saved sinner. I am not, I'm not that dirty, hardcore, dirty, rotten, filthy sinner that I was when I got saved. God has cleaned up my life. God has helped me hide God, taught me how to read this book, how to study this book, how to hide it in my heart and how to live it, what applies to me, what I can learn from things that apply to other people, other dispensations. Okay? But God is perfect. He's infallible. Give Him the glory. Okay? Praise and give glory to God for, his, for this teaching. It has given me lots to ponder on. Praise the Lord. As I had to go to the city today, this teaching has kept my mind on things above and not on things on the earth. The Word of God is truly wonderful. Absolutely, brothers and Christ. I'm, I'm working on a study that I'm going to call uh, The Grass is Greener on the Other Side. How many times have you guys heard that? The grass is greener on the other side. And the whole point of that, te the worldly way of saying it, is that it's not always greener on the other side. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. Well, brothers and Christ, Jesus is going to prepare a place for us. The grass is greener on the other side, oh, brethren. We're losing focus on that up there, and we're getting distracted by all the junk that's going on around here. The world. Economic collapse, a civil war, a World War III, uh, conspiracy theory this, conspiracy theory that. Um, lot, some ministries have become talk shows. Talk slash reaction shows, drama shows. And they're not hardcore Bible preaching anymore. Preaching the word. Remember, we're commanded to preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And one of the things we're supposed to preach is, brethren, this is not it. We got Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. Don't you remember that verse? Okay. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto me. That where I am, there ye may also be. There ye may be also. Okay. Uh, there's verses talking about the, that we can't even fathom the things that God has prepared for us in heaven. And we're supposed to dwell on eternal things and work on the eternal, you know, earning rewards in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. We're supposed to be thinking about the eternal, not the temporal. Okay. So it's a good thing that you, if, 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 I can, if God can use me to get your eyes back on what matters and living the life of Christ... And you're doing it for the Lord because your eyes are on Jesus Christ, that blessed hope. Your eyes are on eternity, not this temporal stuff. Sometimes we have to deal with temporal stuff, but I'm saying our eyes are on Jesus while we're doing it. Okay. So I do have two questions, though please correct me where I am wrong or if my understanding is incorrect. But I see that in the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, Jesus was preparing people to enter into the kingdom of heaven falsely called the Millennial Kingdom, but it's called the Day of the Lord. So you put Millennial Kingdom down here, but just so you know, it's not called the Millennial Kingdom. Why? Because the Day of the Lord, even the Day of the Lord, even so a day is a thousand years, a thousand years a day, when you look at some of the teachings of the Day of the Lord, it includes the transition at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble going into the Day of the Lord. Sometimes it uses, it's talking about the transition at the end of the Day of the Lord when Satan's let loose for a little while. And that transition, where we go into the new heaven and the new earth. So it's dangerous calling that the millennial kingdom. Right? But somehow some guy decided, I'm going to call it the millennial kingdom instead of calling it what the Bible called it. And it caught on. And everyone likes to say what man says. But we need to say things God's way. Here's the first question. So if things happened differently and the majority of the Jews, Jewish people accepted Jesus as their Messiah... Would they as a nation have still had to go through the time of Jacob's trouble? And we're going to go through this. But the answer is no. And I'll tell you why people who try to push, well, if they accepted him, they try to do a whole teaching on what would happen if the Jewish people accepted him. I'm going to show you where they're in error. Okay? Would there have been a time of Jacob's trouble? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. But let's get the second question. Also, if the majority of the Jewish people would have believed in Jesus as the Messiah, but remember, it's the Messiah who's called Christ. The kingdom of heaven gospel was this, and you get this through the gospels, is repent. Remember, repentance happens in the heart. Repent and be water baptized, because the water baptism is what washes them clean. 
water baptized. So repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. And they had to believe that Jesus, the Messiah, was the Christ, the Son of the living God. So the Christ is another word of saying their king, the Christ, their king, who's God manifest in the flesh. Okay? He's here to rule and reign. He's your king. Now, I was just talking with the Lord before we started this video. I was like, back in the past when you had 1 Samuel, that's when they first rejected Jesus Christ. Okay? You say, well, how's that? Well, God is their king, and they rejected God as their king. They wanted man. They wanted a man down here to be their king. So what did God do? He came as a man in the likeness of sinful flesh. God the Father manifests in the flesh. There's one meter between man and God, the man, Christ Jesus. He came as a man to be the Christ, the Son of the living God, to be their king. And they still rejected him, but I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. But that, that Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Also, let's see, if they believe that Jesus is the Messiah, would then salvation of the Gentiles have been postponed to the time of the day of the Lord, millennial kingdom? No. Why? I've been reading the Old Testament. Do you realize, brothers and Christ, it's not mentioned much, but in the Old Testament, there was Jews that are Gentiles that became Jews? Well, how do you become a Jew? Well, not by blood. They get circumcised. They start keeping the laws of, of Moses. They start, you know, touch not, taste not, eat not. They start uh, observing the holy days, the Sabbath days and the new moon. They start following the Levitical laws. You'd have to read that. I'm... Uh, I'm all the way up to Job right now, but I can't remember, but you got to read it, but there's a lot of times where, you know, coming out of Egypt, there was uh, Egyptians that came out with them, and the Bible is talking about to the fourth generation, the fourth generation would be considered 100% Jew, and then they would be entitled to the inheritance. There's all these laws in here that talk about how Gentiles were grafted in in the Old Testament, okay? They just weren't grafted in the way we are grafted in today, the, the, the gospel that's given to Paul. Okay? They got grafted in by getting circumcised, uh, keeping the laws of Moses, keeping the holy days, Sabbath days, new moon, the touch not, taste not, eat not, and a lot more other regulations and stuff. You know, doing the uh, animal sacrifices to cover their sins. Okay. But would have been pro -spoil. Here's the thing. There would have been, there's, there's the time of the Gentiles, there's the uh, time of Jacob's trouble that we're going to get into. Neither one of those would have happened if they would have accepted Jesus Christ. And please bear with me. I know some people are like, oh, I'm going to explain it, okay? She says, have a blessed day and pray for you, praying for you too. And then she gave me Colossians 3.2 KJV. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. Amen. There's no point. Up there. Our rewards in heaven. Okay, if you want your rewards down here, I know some brethren that they are so worldly now, and it's so me, myself, and I, the self entity, their pride and their ego, they're getting a lot of their rewards down here because this is where they want their rewards. Okay, their best life now, living their dream life. Okay, our we need to remember our rewards is in heaven. So let's get this, let's get break this down. So they're asking, she's asking the question about. If the nation of Israel would have accepted Jesus Christ when he came the second time, because they rejected him the first time in the Old Testament, God the Father manifested, he was called the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord, that man, there's one time Joshua walks up and he sees a man and he says, of the, of the captain of the host of heaven have I come. So he's called a captain of the host of heaven. How do you know it's Jesus? Because Joshua fell down and worshipped the man and the man didn't stop him. If it was an angel, they'd stop him and say, Hey, don't worship me. Don't, don't give me glory. Give God glory. Worship him, and him only shall thou serve. They always correct him. But when you have the angel of the Lord, or an angel of the Lord, or that captain of the host of heaven, that stands there and says, Let's him worship him without correcting him, you're dealing with Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. He just wasn't Jesus Christ, the name Jesus Christ, until he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. But it was God manifest in the flesh. He had a body in the Old Testament. But God was their king in the Old Testament. So when he came in the likeness of the flesh, they accepted him, but they'd go through the time of Jacob's trouble. The other question was, talking about the time of the Gentiles. So those are the two things. When the time of the Gentiles happened, 
And with the time of Jacob's trouble, the proper term is the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. Remember, I got taught this by a brother in Christ. 70 weeks is determined upon thy people in the book of Daniel. What is that? Every week equals seven years. And if you take 49 uh, weeks, or uh, 40, 49, and you times it by seven, you get like 300 and something, maybe close to 400. And you time out when Daniel had this vision, this dream, that God gave him to when Jesus came and was crucified, that time period makes up to up to 40 or 69 weeks. There's one week missing. That's how we get seven years for the time of Jacob's trouble, and we say it hasn't happened yet. The pause button got put. Why did the pause button get put? Because they rejected their king and crucified him. They rejected their Christ. Christ is king of the Jews, not the Gentiles. The Jews, not the body of Christ. The Jews. Christ. Now, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, holds, when he comes back, he holds the title, capital K, king of lower K case kings. He is capital K king. He's on the top. He's the head. He's the foundation. Absolutely. But when you're talking about that time period when he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, Christ is king of the Jews, not the Gentiles. Always got to keep pushing this to brethren. Okay? So first and foremost, what I want to say is, is I let God handle the what is Because people always say, well, what if this happened? Or what if that happened? I think some brethren are getting desperate for teachings because they've taught, they think they've taught on everything. And they might have, but I doubt it. I highly doubt it. But they think they've taught on so much or almost everything, they don't know what to teach. So they have to come up with something new. And a lot of the new things is what if, what if, theories. They have this theory or that theory or what ifs. Uh, they need to stick to what is. I leave, I let God handle the what ifs. Why? He's the master of it. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay? He's the master of it. And someday, you know, if the brethren, if, if you want, or if God gets me back over to it, I start doing what ifs for instruction and righteousness. We started in Matthew, we were going to go through the whole New Testament. And it was just supposed to be a filler when God wasn't really putting anything on my heart. I could put out some Bible studies in between. And we were doing uh, our studies of Bible ifs for instruction and righteousness. Just to say that when God does an if, there's three parts to it. Okay? Or there's three reasons for it. I'll say it that way. There's two parts to it. If it's a condition. Bible ifs are a condition. If this happens, this will happen. And the thing about a Bible, if, what I meant by the three part is, it could happen, it has happened, it could happen, or it might never happen. But if it does, if any man be in Christ, they get saved, born again, they follow the true plan of salvation, which is repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And after he saves you, if any man be in Christ, this is going to happen. He's going to be a new creature. The old man is dead and buried with Jesus Christ. God gives you a new man, a new creature. All things become new. But anyway, God's the master of the ifs. I leave the Bible ifs to God. I don't get into it. That's why I don't have, try to do big time studies on if this would have happened, then maybe this would have happened. Or if that happened, maybe that... Yeah, you got to be careful. God is the master of the ifs. Okay? I try to deal with what God says is. And that's what we're supposed to do, brothers of Christ. We're to deal with what is. Now, if all three classes of Jews, all three classes of Jews, and we're going to go into just a little bit more in depth, instead of just saying Jews generally, all three classes, what are the three classes? You had the disciples and the apostles. You had the common people. And you had the ruling class, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. All three had to accept Jesus Christ for him to bring, to bring in that day of the Lord. Okay, to save the Jewish people, get them out of bondage to Rome. At the time, Rome was the one in charge, and they were under Roman occupation. Sorry about that. I've been doing a lot of work on the hillside, and my legs hurt. But he'd come in as their king and rule and reign for a thousand years. Okay? But it took all three of those, those, those types of people to get it. 
In the book of Acts, you have the apostles slash disciples turning back to Jesus. So when Jesus came, before they crucified him, okay, the first group of people to turn on him was uh, the Sadducees and scribes never accepted him. Okay? The people, we're going backwards, the people, remember one week he's riding in on the donkey, they're taking olive branches and putting it down, and they're yelling, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. They're accepting him. But then the next week, what happens? They turn on him. And the next week, it's crucify him. Crucify him. They're spitting in his face. They're cursing him. One week, they're praising him and lifting him on high. The next week, they're cursing him and spitting in their, his face. You have the apostles, okay? Remember, in the garden... When uh, Judas Iscariot, the traitor, comes, and he's bringing all these soldiers from the priest, even a servant of the high priest that Peter lops off his ear, right? they all run and scatter, they, and they, they forsake Jesus. Peter denied Jesus three times. Right? So what happens? You get to the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, you, it shows that you have the apostles come back first. They come back to him. And they believe. Remember Thomas, unless I see the, the, the scars in his hands or put my finger in the hole in his side, I will not believe. Now, faith and belief, I hate to tell you, aren't exactly the same thing. Whole other teaching. But you have Thomas that sits there and Jesus looks at him and goes, Because thou hast seen, seen, thou hast believed. You can believe without seeing and you can believe with seeing. But what's the Bible definition of faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you see it, it's no longer faith. That's why the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek it after wisdom. Their faith, it's not their faith, their belief was based off of seeing. And you can still believe and see, or you can believe and not see. Because some of the apostles believed and didn't see, and Thomas was one of the big examples of someone who wouldn't believe until he saw. So you can believe and see, but true faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You cannot have true faith if you require evidence, 100% evidence. It's not faith. Kind of like the Bible version issue. We can prove a lot of facts and a lot of proof that the King James Bible is God's perfect written word, but in the end, you have to believe it by faith. The Bible says that it effectually worketh also in you that believe. Okay. So they required faith. Okay. Then you get, so you have the Jews that come, uh, the apostles come back to Jesus Christ and believe. Then they go out and preach to the common people. And the common people say, okay, yeah, this sounds good. And a lot, you, that's where you see a lot of people that are getting saved. And I say it like this because they're getting saved based off the kingdom of heaven gospel, not the gospel that's revealed to Paul. They're getting saved off the kingdom of heaven gospel because that's what's being preached in the book of Acts. When Jews are present, they're always telling them you have to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Is that how we're supposed to get saved today? No, I don't have to believe Jesus is the Christ. I have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I have to believe on how he died for my sins, was, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You have to believe in the resurrection proving that it is God and it was God's blood that was shed on the cross. Okay? I don't have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the King of the Jews. Okay? I have to believe He's Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. He's God manifest in the flesh and it was His blood that was shed on the cross to wash my sins away. And I believe in the resurrection. Okay? You get all of that. But we don't have to believe He's the Christ. That's not the gospel for today. That's the gospel for the kingdom of heaven when they were preaching to the Jews to accept their king. But you get the people, they're starting to come back in belief. They've seen these, that's why you have all the signs and wonders in the book of Acts. They're coming back, they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom of, he of heaven, where there's signs and wonders, the Jews require a sign, there's signs and wonders, they're doing miracles, they're healing people, okay? they're casting out devils, they're speaking in tongues, 
These are signs for the Jewish people. They start to come back to him. Then they go to that ruling class. Okay. If you got your King James Bible, go ahead and open it up to Acts 751. Acts 751. You get to that ruling class, and they're the last ones. If they would have accepted the second time, if they would have accepted Jesus Christ, would he have come down and started the day of the Lord? I believe absolutely. Absolutely he would. They would. But let's read it first. Acts 751. This is after Stephen sits there, he goes to Moses, he goes through the old Levitical law, or the Old Testament, and he proves Jesus Christ. And they still reject him. These Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, the ruling class. And he says, You stiff necked and uncircumcision in heart, not in flesh, in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? God would send prophets. Remember he did that parable where he sent prophets and they were killed. He did the parable about the guy who let out a vineyard and a master that let out his vineyard and he went off to a far country and then he sent people to, to get the, reap the rewards of the vineyard and they were being killed by the people that were running the vineyard. And he said, perhaps I'll send my son, and they'll accept my son. Right? He's, he, was, he was basically going after the pro, uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, saying, I, God has sent prophet after prophet after prophet, and you guys have beaten him, you guys have killed him, you guys have imprisoned him. Remember Isaiah, Jeremiah, okay, Jeremiah or Isaiah, where he got thrown into a pit, you know, like a well slash pit, and it was marsh. It's talking about how it's like marsh, almost like the mud that comes up to your knees and everything. And they threw him in there to die because they didn't like what he had to say. All right. So that's what Stephen's doing here. Which of the prophets have your not, fathers not persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the dispensa dispensation disposition, I'm sorry, disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, the Sadducees, scribes, Pharisees, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Not sitting, standing. He, a lot of times it talks about him sitting there. Because he's seated at the right hand of God. He's God the Father manifest in the flesh. He's the person of God. He's the image of God. Mm -hmm. The Godhead is just, is the Godhead teaching, the proper teaching for the Godhead, is God the Father in the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But here it says he's standing. Stephen sees him standing. Well, I, I believe it's, I, I agree with a lot of the teachings that a lot of brethren teach, and I agree with it. That he's standing because if this is the last step, this is the last group of people that need to accept him for him to come back and, and start ruling and reigning and be in the Christ, the King of the Jews. He's standing on the right hand of God. But what happens? Let's keep reading. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Notice he says, capital S, Son of Man. Remember that. Capital S, Son of God, is saying Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. When you look at Jesus Christ, you see the image of God. You see God manifest in the flesh. When he speaks, it's God speaking. When he does the work, it's God doing the work. Remember, he says, if you don't believe me, believe me for the work's sake. I work hitherto, and my Father works hitherto. Okay? But when you see capital S, Son of Man, it's talking about Mary's lineage, and Mary's marriage to Joseph, I tell people, when Mary's married to Joseph, she's now married into his family lineage. That's how it works. So to get things, to make it where people can't argue, Mary's lineage goes all the way back to King David, and uh, Joseph's lineage goes all the way back to King David. Not that Joseph's got Jesus' father. Joseph is not Jesus' father. But Mary is married into Joseph's family now, and she's now part of that bloodline going up Joseph's family. But Bible does it big time, like he covers, crosses every T, dots every I. He gives you Mary's lineage all the way back to King David. He gives you Joseph's lineage all the way back to King David. But that's what capital S, Son of Man is. That's how we know that when he's talking to these Jews, he's preaching the kingdom of heaven. Capital S, Son of Man is for the kingdom of heaven gospel. 
He's your king. He's, he's descended from King David, and he fulfills the prophecies. Okay? In other words, he, um, when you ask him if you, you got all the credit, credit, what do you call it? Um, sometimes words kind of, it's hard for me to find some words, but basically he's proven himself. He's got all the, the proof uh, that, you know, he, he meets the standards. There's a, he meets all the standards to be Christ the King. Okay, all the Old Testament prophecies. Now it says here, standing at the right hand of God, the Son of Man, Son of Man, Kingdom of, of Heaven Gospel. That's how we know that's being preached. Okay. The Gospel is for today, we're about the Son of God. Capitalist Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. There's one meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There's one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ, none other. The Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 57, Then they cried out with a loud voice, Who's they? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. And stopped their ears. They just proved what... Uh, he just said, Stephen just said, you know, you always do resist the Holy Ghost. They cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their cloths at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul, who later, become, uh, later is known as Paul, because Saul is his Jewish name, Paul is his uh, Roman name. And people know him by Saul, so he goes, because how all the wickedness he did when he gets saved, he starts going by Paul instead of Saul, the Saul the wicked man. It's also a, a, a good example of the changed life. The old man Saul that was crucified, uh, killing Christians and attacking Jesus Christ, that man got nailed at the cross. The old man got thrown at the foot of the cross. And now you have the new man, Paul. But verse 59, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not their sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now I believe here's where God's like, okay, that was strike three. Strike one, the Old Testament. You go back to 1 Samuel, when they asked Samuel for a king like all everyone else. They wanted a man down here as king like everyone else. They rejected God as their king. That's strike one. Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. And he was preaching. John the Baptist was preaching the kingdom of heaven. When he got locked up, Jesus took up that mantle and started preaching the kingdom of heaven. John the Baptist said, I must become less so that he can become more. He's actually the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, He, he it is that cometh. I, I, barely, I merely baptize with water. That's for the kingdom of heaven gospel. But he it is that cometh after me, whose shoes lasts, I'm not worthy to loosen. It is he that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh, God manifest in the flesh, came in the likeness of sinful flesh with the name Jesus, they rejected him. That's strike two. They had him crucified. And when they said, uh, Pontius Pilate, shall I crucify your king? Would they say, we have no king but Caesar. They rejected God and he came how they wanted him. They wanted a man as king. Remember, if you remember 1 Samuel, give us a man. We want a man to rule over us like all the other nations. He sent him a man. God manifest in the flesh. God in the likeness of sinful flesh. And they still rejected him for a worldly man. A worldly man, Caesar. That was strike two. This part that we just read right here, that was strike three. When Jesus comes back for the day of the Lord, there is no, will you accept him? We're just here to see if you'll accept him. No, it says he comes back and he rules with a rod of iron. He takes what's rightfully his. And he starts ruling and reigns from Jerusalem. And he becomes king, capital K, king of all lowercase k kings. He rules the world. Right. You say, well, 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 how does this answer her questions? The point I hopefully make is, in the old video real quick, the point I hopefully made in the old video that she was looking at is sometimes I'll mention how Jesus had to offer it to him. This is important. He had to offer the kingdom of heaven to the Jewish people knowing they would reject him the second time. He wanted Stephen to offer 
the kingdom of heaven gospel to that ruling class the third time, the, the third strike, okay, the third time, knowing they would reject him. But why do you do that? Because that's a just God. That's a righteous and just God. He doesn't go, oh, I, I know you're not, you know, I know you're going to do something bad, so I'm going to kill you now and throw you into hell. But I haven't done anything yet. I don't care. That's not a just God. A just God goes, he warned you, don't do that, don't do that. And when you do it, knowing you're going to do it, then he punishes you. That's a just court, that's a just judge, that's a just God. He had to offer it to him. So the point I was making in some of those old videos is that God still had to offer it to him even though he knew they would reject. And that would bring us to why I believe what I said. All the Old Testament prophecies are based off the Jewish people rejecting Jesus Christ. Rejecting God as their king the second time. Rejecting God as their king the third time. All the Old Testament prophecies are based off of it. And where people are getting really messed up is they try to say, well, what if they um, accepted him and they still try to go off the Old Testament prophecies being the way they are? Well, the Old Testament prophecies are based off of them rejecting him. Now, I'm here to tell you that the Old Testament prophecies would have been different. There would have not been any prophecy about the time of Jacob's trouble. Because she asked about that. Nope, there wouldn't be a time of Jacob's trouble. If they accepted Jesus Christ the second time or the third time, there would have been no time of Jacob's trouble, but there also wouldn't have been any prophecies of the time of Jacob's trouble. Some people forget who God is. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. He's Alpha, the beginning. Boy, I'll do over here. The beginning, and he's Omega, the end. First and the last. They forget who God is. Okay? There would have been no time of Jacob's trouble. And there would have been no prophecies of the time of Jacob's trouble. There wouldn't be Daniel. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. There would have been 69 weeks are determined upon thy people. 69 is not a good number, brothers of Christ. 69 weeks are determined upon thy people. See, the prophecies of the Old Testament would be based off of what actually happens. That's why I say we don't play the what-if game. God is the master of what-if. We deal with what is. It's 70 weeks. They did reject him, and he prophesied that they would reject him. That's why there is a time of the Gentiles, or a time of, the, a time of Jacob's trouble. The other question was the time of the Gentiles. What about the time of the Gentiles? There wouldn't have been any time of the Gentiles. There wouldn't have been. There wouldn't have been prophecies in the Old Testament about the time of the Gentiles, how God would go out and, you know, uh, be the salvation to the Gentiles. Those prophecies wouldn't have been there. That's why it's very dangerous when you have men start getting into the what-if world. Okay. Now, I believe the kingdom of heaven would have been brought in. Some people would say, what about the Old Testament prophecies? But once again, they would have been different. The problem that you have with people who try to do Bible studies on what if they would have accepted them. Well, if they would have accepted them, the Old Testament prophesied at the time of the Gentiles... Not the church age. That's false. That's false. Remember, there's a church in the Old Testament. The Jews coming out of Egypt is called a church. All church means is a, a, a people that's called out to be separate from the world that belong to God. That's what a church is. A, they say called out assembly. There's more to it. It's people that God has called out to be separate from the world. And the Old Testament it was a Jewish people. Today, in the time of the Gentiles, it's the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. We are called to be separate from this world. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there are saints and there's Jewish people. Again, the 144,000 are sealed in their forehead. That they're called out to be separate from the world. They're for God and they're supposed to be separate from the world. They're called a church. So you have a church in different dispensations. This is not the church age. It's the time of the Gentiles where salvation went out to the world because the Jews rejected their king three times. They rejected God as their king. So now salvation went out to the world, and I'm reading this in Romans right now, and the reason that salvation went out to the world, the time of the Gentiles, is to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Okay? They rejected their king, so now he's going to go offer it to people that wouldn't reject him. Not as king of Israel, but... Uh, but it wouldn't reject God Almighty. They were rejecting God Almighty when they rejected Jesus as, as being the Christ, the King. 
of the Jews. But God's like, you're, you're not just rejecting Jesus Christ, you're rejecting God the Father. So I'm going to go out to these Gentiles who will accept me. And I'm going to provoke you to jealousy. Okay. But the time of the Gentiles would never have happened. Never would have happened if they accepted Jesus Christ. Does that mean all Jew Gentiles have been wiped out and no hope? No. Like I said, you've got to read the Old Testament. A lot of people are very ignorant on the Old Testament. I, I'm a strong believer that if you're newly saved, get in the Pauline epistles. Make sure you get the Pauline epistles down. And then you start branching out from there. You start learning a little bit more about the Gospels and the Kingdom of Heaven. You start learning about the time of Jacob's trouble. You start learning a little bit about Revelation. And Hebrews talking about Jews going to Revelation. Uh, Second Peter, you have Jews in the Re in Revelation. Um, James, Jews in, in the you know in the time of Jacob's trouble, like going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Get saved today, or you're going into this time period. That's why I always say what Hebrews is, James is. Uh, when by the time you get to Second Peter, they're talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. You can start branching out, but eventually people kind of stop. You need to keep going. You need to get to the Old Testament and learn things in the Old Testament. Gentiles could be adopted in. They could have been, they don't use the word grafted, but I, there was a verse where when they came back, uh, Esther, that's what it was. I was listening to Esther. If you listen to the end of Esther, it says a lot of people became Jews. They became Jews? They were, there's Jews that are already Jews, and then you had Gentiles becoming Jews. Some people say, no, that's just Jews that weren't living like a Jew, and now they start acting like... I've read the Old Testament. Gentiles could get grafted in, okay, in the Old Testament. It was a lot harder. Today's the easiest time to get saved. Today is the easiest time. The simplicity of the Gospel. Come to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Okay, God is nigh to them of a broken heart, and save as such that be of a contrite spirit. In true biblical repentance, having sorrow in your heart for sinning against God, for your personal sins. True biblical repentance, and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Throw your iniquities at the foot of the cross. Throw the old man at the foot of the cross. That's giving your life to Jesus at the cross. He gave his life for us at the cross. We're to throw our old man and give our old life to him at the cross. So he can give us a new life after salvation. But you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's God's blood that was shed and it washes my sins away. And that he was buried and rose again the third day proving that he is God. That's the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You repent, you believe, you confess both in prayer showing that you're not ashamed. And then you ask God to save you showing that you didn't earn it in any way, shape or form. You have people trying to t do away with asking God. That's works. Repentance is a work. Prayer is a work. What is it? They don't want to see people get saved. The gospel is so simple. It is so easy today to get grafted in. I'm reading that in the book of Romans where Paul's talking about us being grafted in because of unbelief. The branches were broken off. They rejected Jesus three times, but God's not done with them. The Jews got put on hold. The kingdom of heaven gospel got put on hold. There's a pause button. We're in the time of the Gentiles, and now we can get grafted in. In the Old Testament, it was hard to get grafted in as a Gentile. But today, it's the most simplest play time to get saved is today. It is so simple. Don't fall for that false gospel out there that's just easy believism. Faith alone, only believe, only believe, and they take out repentance. You can never truly have faith. You can have head knowledge or believe head knowledge, you can know what Jesus did and why he did it, but you'll never have true faith if you skip repentance. How that Jesus died for our sins, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, two, it's actually 2 through 4, or 3 and 4, sorry, 3 and 4. How that Christ died for our sins, repentance is work, and you don't believe how Christ died and it was for your sins. That's repentance for our sins. Having sorrow in your heart for those sins that Jesus was crucified for. It's just, it's, it's over these people's heads. Why? Because they don't want God as the final authority. That's always what it is. This easy believism is, hey, you can get saved and still be your own final authority. You can be the boss. You can say how it is. You can live however you want to live. You can believe whatever you want to believe. God's not the final authority. 
The true plan of salvation is so easy, we can get grafted in today. It's the easiest time period to get grafted in. Time of Jacob's trouble, very hard. The Old Testament, it was hard. Time of Jacob's trouble, it's very hard. Because I believe the time of Jacob's trouble goes back to dealing with the Jewish people, the kingdom of heaven. And can the Gentiles get saved in that time period? Yes, but it's very hard. The time to get saved is now. If you've fallen for false gospels or you come across this video and thought, and you made it this far and you've never been saved, you need to get saved now, the Bible way. Okay, Repentance towards God. Come to Him broken with sorrow in your heart for sinning against Him. That sin that you've sinned against Him put Jesus on the cross. And you come to the cross, throwing your iniquities to the foot of the cross. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I am the chiefest of sinners. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Lord, I am a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell for sinning against you. Lord, I am so sorry. I, I, I should have never done it, Lord. I wish I never done it, but I did. I, I'm wrong. You're right. I'm wicked. You're holy. I am flawed. You're perfect. I keep going on. You come to the cross with that attitude of humbling yourself and becoming broken. The Bible talks about Jesus as a stone, a rock. And those that fall upon this stone shall be broken. They take repentance out. You're not going to get saved. Those that fall upon this rock shall be broken. But whomever this rock falls on, it will grind them to dust. Powder of dust. Things dust. When the time comes and it's too late, time's up. You go into the time of J uh, you die in your sins, not being washed away, or you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, time's up. And that trying to get grafted in the time of Jacob's trouble. Sorry for going off on that too much, but it's 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 the hardest time period to ever get grafted in and get saved. As a Gentile. All right. Remember, going back to the, the two questions again. The reason I say it wouldn't, it wouldn't, because the Gospels, or the, the prophecies would have been different. But that's a whole mess you get into. Well, what, what prophecies now do we have to change to do our what-if theory teaching, our what-if theory teaching? You know, the, they try to make out the time, of J, uh, the time of the Gentiles would have been a day, and then the time of Jacob's trouble would have happened here if they would have accepted. They make a whole mess of the Scriptures because they have to go back and start changing prophets, prophecies to try to line up with the what-ifs. I, I, I'd never do that. I won't mess with this book. The prophecies prophesy that there'd be a time of J, uh, Jacob's trouble, there'd be a time of the Gentiles. Why? Because it prophesied the Jewish people rejecting Jesus Christ time and time again. They, they reject God as their king. And we've read about Stephen doing it. Talking about, hey, you've, oh, they, they've sent prophets and you've guys basically beaten them, you've stoned them, you've killed them. And now, God sent His Son, God the Father manifest in the flesh. The Son of God, which He talks about the Son of Man. But God sent you a king, His Son, and you crucified Him. Right. Remember Revelation 4.8. It says in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. You can turn there. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. And the four beasts and each of them six I see and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, which is to come. God knows past, present, and future. God allows things to happen. Remember, the Bible says God's will is that none should perish, but all should come to, re to repentance. But God gave us free will. He allows people to perish. If that's what you want, He'll let you do it. You want to go to hell, He'll let you go to hell. You want to go to heaven, He's willing that none should perish. Here's how to make it to heaven. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. And after He saves you, He gives you a new life, the new birth. That the word church, now you're called out to be separate from the world, you belong to God. You belong to Jesus Christ. We're now in Christ Jesus. But God knows all and He sees all. He's past, present, and future. Okay. Romans 16, 26 says, 
Romans 16, 26 says, But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. The everlasting God? In the beginning was the Word, capital W Word, talking about Jesus Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The person of the Godhead was there at the very beginning. Okay. God is omnipresent. They try to use the word omnipresent. But bottom line, he's in the past, he's in the present, he's in the future. He sees all. That's why we have the prophecies here the way they are, because God saw what's going to happen. And I'm not going to mess with them. And don't get stuck in teachings where they start messing with this book, saying, well, what if... And we tweak this, and we tweak that, and we decide to add here, and we decide to subtract here just to do a theory what-if study. Watch out for those. Okay, please, please watch out for those. We need to deal more about what is. Okay, and I'm not getting onto this, Sister Christ, I'm just this is my, you know, answering the question. And uh, I love warning you, don't get stuck, and all the other brothers and sisters of Christ out there, don't get stuck in the what-if teachings. Get stuck in the what is. If I made a mistake in some of my older teachings, please forgive me. The point I'm trying to make more than anything in those older teachings is that God still had to give the Jewish people a chance. He knew they were going to fail, uh, reject Him, but He still had to offer it to be a just God. And sometimes I probably didn't get that point across enough. So forgive me. Okay? God knew the Jewish people would reject Him and the kingdom of heaven shall so uh, a kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, sometimes called the kingdom of God, would be put off twice. He brought in the, the time of the Gentiles, because that's what the Old Testament prophecy said. And he set up a seven-year time period called Daniel's 70th week, or the time of Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, if you disagree with this, because you like to do the what-if studies and the theory studies and, you know... What not, and you want to disagree with me, go ahead and do it in the comment section, Brother Sister Christ. Go ahead and do it in the comment section. But my thing is, is we need to deal with what is. Leave the what ifs to God. He's the master of it. Okay? If a man be called a brother. And then he goes and talks about what you do if a man's called a brother. Okay? If, if, if. God's the master of Bible ifs. Okay? So that about wraps this up. Okay, Brother Sister Christ? If you're not saved, get truly saved, because now is the time period that's easiest to get grafted in. If you are saved, get busy looking for that blessed hope and living for the Lord, and don't get distracted on what ifs. Man's what ifs. God's, absolutely. Man's what ifs. Uh, focus on what God says is. Take this book, hide it in your heart, and live it. Be a living witness and a verbal witness, and live every day for the Lord, brother says Christ. I've been pushing this hardcore because it's so important that you start your day with the Word of God, you end your day with the Word of God. You start your day with prayer as you're reading the Word of God, you pray. You pray over the day. Uh, you know, you pray without ceasing. You pray all throughout the day. And you end your day with prayer and the Word of God. Okay? Make sure God is, and His Word is the center of your life, the foundation of your life. Okay? I'm trying to think of that verse where it says, Where your heart is, there, your, there will you be also. Um, you know, where you spend most of your time and what's on your lips the most? Do you, do you talk about God's Word a lot in everything that you do? Or do you talk about the world a lot and use the world's words a lot on everything you do? Where you spend most of your time, that's, what, that's where your God is. Is this where you spend most of your time, brothers and Christ? And the what is, not the what is, but the what is. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Leave any comments down, down, down below if you disagree. But bottom line, trust the Lord and let's deal with what is and keep our eyes on what matter. Like the sister was pointing out. Okay, I'll read that verse real quick one more time. Because I love that's a good verse. Colossians 3, 2. Set your affections on things above not things on the earth. Right. I'll see you in the next study.